It's a bright morning at the playground, and we just got a big box of jump ropes, 12 of them. We've got four teams ready to play. How do we make sure every team gets the same number of ropes? Let's hand them out. One for team one, one for team two, one for team three, one for team four. That's four ropes handed out. We still have eight left, so we do it again. Now every team has three jump ropes. That's 12 divided by four equals three. 12 is the total number of ropes. Four is how many teams, and three is what each team gets. Those three parts even have names, dividend, divisor, and quotient. Every division problem has them. Division doesn't just mean sharing, it can also mean grouping. Imagine you have 15 soccer balls and you wanna make groups of three. You start grouping. Three in the first group, three in the second, three in the third, three in the fourth, three in the fifth. You made five groups, so 15 divided by three equals five. Division can tell us how many are in each group or how many groups we can make. It's the same idea, just a different way to look at it. Now, remember how we said multiplication and division are best buddies? They work together. If you know that three times four equals 12, then you also know that 12 divided by three equals four, and 12 divided by four equals three. Those four facts are called a fact family. If you know one, you know them all. Multiplication builds up and division breaks down. They always stick together. Let's try another example. There are 10 granola bars and two snack tables. If we share them equally, each table gets five granola bars. That's 10 divided by two equals five. But if we switch it around and have five tables instead, each one gets two bars. That's 10 divided by five equals two. Both are true. When the divisor and the quotient swap places, it still works. Those are called related facts. Division is also a lot like subtraction on repeat. Think of 12 divided by three. If you keep taking away three until you hit zero, you'll see the pattern. 12 minus three is nine. 9 minus 3 is 6. 6 minus 3 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. You subtracted 4 times. That means 12 divided by 3 equals 4. Division is really just fast repeated subtraction. Now let's look at some division facts to help us remember the easy ones. 8 divided by 2 equals 4. 9 divided by 3 equals 3. 12 divided by 4 equals 3. 16 divided by 4 equals 4. 20 divided by 5 equals 4. See the pattern? When we divide by 2, we split things in half. When we divide by 3, we make three equal groups. And the bigger the number we divide by, the smaller each group gets. It's like cutting a cake. The more slices you make, the smaller each one is. Let's have a little game. I'll say the problem and you shout the answer. For I do, six divided by three. Two. Eight divided by four. Two. 12 divided by three. Four. Sixteen divided by four. Four. 20 divided by 5. 4. You're getting too fast for me. 
before we wrap up, let's talk about something new. Sometimes numbers don't split perfectly. Let's say we have 10 cupcakes and three friends. We start sharing one for each. Again, again, again. Each friend ends up with three cupcakes, but one cupcake is left over. That leftover piece is called a remainder. The answer is three remainder one. 10 divided by three equals three remainder one. Division doesn't always come out even, and that's totally fine. It just means something didn't fit perfectly. Now let's look back at what we learned. Division means making equal groups. It can mean sharing equally or grouping things into sets. Every division problem has three parts, dividend, divisor, and quotient. Division and multiplication are opposites that help each other. Division can be shown through repeated subtraction. Sometimes it leaves remainders and you can never divide by zero. That's the full picture of grade two division. You did it. You learned everything about how division works, how it connects to multiplication, and how to handle leftovers.